God knows that. We got millions of more votes. I tell people, you know, oh, what a great job you did. I was being interviewed by this fake news reporter. And they said, what happened in 2020? I said, well, we did much better, actually. We got millions more votes. We got the largest number of votes of any sitting president in history. They said, you know, I never thought of it that way. I said, why don't we start thinking about it that way? Got a weak election. And likewise, getting more votes than Think of it. There's never been a president, a sitting president, that got anywhere near. I think we got like 10 million more votes than Obama. Yes. Obama. Yes. Yes. He's so powerful. He's so handsome. Yes. So so oh, He's such a great speaker. What does he say? He says nothing. And we're leaving. Biden and everyone else, including the Republicans, by record numbers in the polls. So I may just have to do it again. Yes! 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 Strongest, best border we ever had two years ago. Now we have the worst border. I believe it's worse than any border anywhere in the world. Because no third world country would let people come into their country the way we have. Right here in Pennsylvania last year, two illegal alien criminals allegedly brutalized and bludgeoned a man to death on a busy street corner. In Chester County, an illegal alien stands accused of grabbing a 33-year-old woman by the hair, pulling her down and around the ground, and stabbing her to death in front of her seven-year-old daughter and her three-year-old son. And just a few weeks ago, an illegal alien murderer was charged with shooting to death a 76-year-old man from Pennsylvania. He took a walk every morning, and this guy killed him. No reason to say that. Didn't know. Didn't know. Didn't know. Didn't know. Didn't know. The radical Democrat Congress has turned our country into one giant sanctuary for dangerous criminal aliens. We protect all of the criminals. We don't protect our own people. In fact, they raid our people. In the Republican Party, we believe our country should be a sanctuary for law-abiding citizens who love America. Yeah. If we're going to make America great again, our first task is to make America safe again. We have got to save America. You know, I told you before I love the fields, but I like this better than because the air conditioning system. But this air conditioning is not working too well. It's about 100 degrees up here. I'm sweating like a dog. I'll call Dr. Oz. Dr. Oz, am I okay, Dr. Oz? He says so. You know, I was on a show years ago. And uh, Dr. Raz, I'm going to introduce him in a second. But I was in a show years ago and did like an examination of it. I don't know what the hell I did the show for. I wasn't like even a politician at that point. But he did an examination and the word said he's extremely healthy, really a very, very fine, fit man, but he should lose 20 or 25 pounds. I was so angry I didn't see him. <laughs> but he was great, but he could couple of pounds. He's great. He's going to be great. 
Under Democrat control, the streets of our great cities are drenched in the blood of innocent victims. Much of this crime is caused by drug dealers who, during the course of their lives, will kill an average of 500 American citizens. Every drug dealer is responsible, and that doesn't include what they've done to families and people that haven't died, but families that are just devastated by what happened to their children and to themselves. Think of it, 500 people, the average drug dealer. I'm calling for the death penalty for drug dealers. Yes! 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 yes. I was setting them up in the White House. There's a Blue Ribbon Committee headed by socialites. And they just want, I mean, look, they're very nice people, but they just want a little publicity for themselves. They can't deal with the kind of killers that we're talking about. We want the death penalty for drug dealers, and you will say, millions of lives. You know, we're going to lose 450,000 people, I think, this year. You know, just to go off. Does anybody mind that I do that? Yeah. Is there any better place to be on a beautiful Saturday evening than a Trump rally? So, you know, I got to know a lot of the foreign leaders, and let me tell you, uh, unlike our leader, they're at the top of their game. These are like central casting. There's nobody that could play the role in Hollywood. The role of Hollywood, nobody can play the role of President Xi in China. Nobody can play the role. He's a fierce person. Poop! Fierce. He's smart. You know, a lot of times I'll say somebody's smart in the fake news. He, he called President Xi smart. <laughs> He rules with an iron fist, 1.5 million people. Yeah, I'd say he's smart. So, I'm with President Xi, and I got along with him very well. I mean, once COVID came, we just helped, but we made a great trade deal with him, helped our farmers, helped our manufacturers. But I'm with him, and I really had a great relationship with him. And then I asked him a question. I said, President, he's president for life. So I call him King. I said, King. He said, but I am not King. He said, you want to be your president for life. He said, no, we're in your royal age. You will be next soon. Yeah. By the way, do you notice a lot of ships are circling Taiwan? That wouldn't have happened either, by the way. But I said, President, can I ask you a very simple question? Do you have a drug problem? He looked at me like, what's wrong with you? No, of course not. Goes, no, no. He's like, what the hell? Stupid question. <laughs> no. He said, you don't have a drug problem with 1.5 million people. His big problem is they make the drugs. He said, you know, that's their problem. That would have been their problem. He was stopping the too. But now they're sending the fentanyl in and numbers. You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. Pouring through that porous border. The numbers you wouldn't believe. I had them very close to stop. Couldn't do it. I told him you can't do it. So president, president, you don't have a drug problem. But why, but why don't you have a drug problem? Uh, we have quick draw. He said, what is a quick draw? We immediately catch the drug dealer. We give him quick trial. And if he is guilty, which I would say probably they're batting, would you say, Oz, would you say they're about batting 100% or only 99? If the drug dealer is guilty. He is immediately executed. Yeah. So we have no drug problem. And there are other countries like that too, Singapore. And if you do that, you know, I, I've told this, and it's a hard thing to say, because calling for the death penalty and stuff. But think of it. You kill 500 people during the lifetime. And I think it's much worse than that. I think that's only what we hear about. It would stop. It, I, I, if you didn't get it down 75, 80, 90 percent from day one, I'd be surprised. And these committees that they set up, 
It's laughable. It's a horrible thing. We would solve that problem so fast. And I'm 